What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car track SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we're in the brand new 2023 Lexus GX 460, courtesy of Bobby Rahal Lexus in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so why are we in this one today? Because this is probably the most reliable luxury SUV in existence today. And there are actually plenty of changes for the 2023 model year as well and this thing is a true off-roading SUV and I'll be touching on that and of course so in this video we will be touching on everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering for ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 GX 460 first one being the base setup starting at 58,525 premium for $59,860, luxury for $69,180, and lastly, the one we are in today being the Black Line Special Edition going for $63,260. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on this one is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 4.6 liter naturally aspirated V8, putting out 301 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 329 pound-feet of torque coming in at 3,500 RPM. That power is going to be sent to all four wheels. This is a full time four-wheel drive system that comes standard on the GX by the way but the power is sent to the ground through a six-speed automatic zero to 60 time approximately 7.2 seconds we'll uh test that out here in a little bit top speed 110 miles per hour if you're really interested and fuel economy comes in at 15 in the city 19 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so now that we got all of that out of the way like I said let's go ahead and give this a shot let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the GX 460 here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right in three two one go baby oh, that's actually quick all right that's nice so I thought for the size of this beast, it was gonna be kind of slow, but I love that it's still not turbocharged. So many vehicles out there are still turbocharging everything right now for whatever reason. Well, for fuel economy, I get it, but still it's a naturally aspirated V8. So there wasn't any turbo lag or anything, it was instant power the second you hit the gas. Definitely not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. Although this thing is a beast, the engine is a beast as well to match it. So that was plenty of an acceleration for this thing. It uh, kind of surprised me. I don't know. It's been a while since I've driven this thing. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.3-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.3-inch ventilated rear discs. As far as the 60 easier stopping distance goes, it actually comes in at 133 feet, which obviously isn't the best. It's not the worst I've ever tested, though. I think the worst was 139 feet on the Volkswagen Atlas. So 133, it's not the worst. And it's to be expected in a vehicle of this size. But I will say, you can kind of feel that. It doesn't come to as quick of a spot stop <laughs> i can't talk it doesn't come to as quick of a stop as you would expect or you would probably want upper 120s is typically what i would look for in an suv like this so i don't know i'll just say the braking could be better so then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent double wishbone type front suspension in the back four link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars along with gas pressurized shock absorbers of course as far as ride quality goes it's actually been perfectly fine now i did hit some bumps back there so kind of did have that off-road feel kind of to it so i will say that but in my short test drive it has been perfectly fine for me as far as steering feel goes it kind of leans on the heavier side of things which i personally appreciate always love a heavier weighted steering feel and you kind of got that in the gx it's not it's not super heavy like a sports car but it feels good so it's definitely not a loose steering feel because that's typically what you find in suvs actually so i like it in the gx it does a good job here but as far as cabin noise goes we're going 35 miles per hour there is almost no no wind noise whatsoever coming into the cabin and not really any road noise either so it kind of is a very serene cabin in the GX so as expected for a Lexus I guess you could say so I do like that as well and touching on visibility this is probably the best visibility you're going to get in an SUV like this because because of its shape I can see perfectly fine out of my rear view mirror so it's not going to get a heck of a lot better than that and rain sensing windshield wipers touching on forward visibility come on the premium trim level and up which is kind of weird because those rain sensing windshield wipers if I remember correctly were standard last year for the 2022 model year but now you got to get the premium trim level and up for them so I don't know that's kind of interesting but anyways that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's not 
I'll go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Lexus GX 460. All right, you guys, here she is, the new 2023 Lexus GX 460, finished in black. Yes, that is the fancy color name for this particular version that we have here. By the way, there is a new color for 2023. If you're interested, it's called Eminent White Pearl. Now that is a cool color name. But anyways, let's go ahead and start where the GX is actually made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter J, indicating that the GX460 is built and assembled in Japan. Actually, 100%, all of it is built and assembled. The parts, everything is in Japan. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Of course, you have that large Lexus spindle front grill in typical Lexus fashion there. Triple beam LED headlights to the sides. That comes standard for every single trim level across the board. Wanted to emphasize that because in some other Lexuses I know you don't get the triple beam. You get the LED projector headlights but you don't get the triple beam. So this is added illumination for all trim levels. I absolutely love that. LED daytime running lights also coming standard. You guys can see those as are on right now. Automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Also automatic high beam so, so if you have your high beams on at night, it's going to sense a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, then automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's got to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams. So that is pretty cool. And then if you were to go with a premium trim level and up, down below, you will also get LED fog lights. So I don't actually have them on right now, but you can see that they are down there. But nonetheless, this is a very menacing look up front. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, looking all the way to the top there, roof rails do come standard for all trim levels across the board. The crossbars that you're seeing up there, that is an added option, but they look dang cool up there too. But anyways, rear privacy glass also coming standard. You do have some chrome belt line molding coming standard, but of course we don't have it because we have the black line edition. So it's gonna replace all those chrome accents with a gloss black. So actually it looks really good with everything blacked out on this thing. But taking a look at the side mirrors, body color, power adjustable side mirrors do come standard they will be heated with led integrated turn signals then as well also illuminated running boards coming standard for all trim levels across the board i 100 love that and you actually kind of do need the running boards to get up in the gx when I mean, it's kind of a stretch i can do it but the running boards are definitely helpful, I will say that. But so then taking a look at the wheel configurations, they are going to differ dependent upon the trim level. 18 inch split six spoke alloys for the base and premium trims, 19 inch split six spoke alloys for the luxury, and lastly, 18 inch split six spoke alloys with a gloss black finish for the black line that you guys are looking at. So definitely very nice. I do like the look of the wheels on this thing, but anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the GX, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is a body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top up there. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. If you're wondering, where is the rear window wiper? I will show you. It's actually tucked away up underneath of that rear spoiler. There it is. There, I got it for you guys. But anyways, that's pretty cool. The Chevy Tahoe and Suburban do, does that as well. It kind of helps with assisting with visibility visibility and the other cool part is the reason why they do that is because you can actually open it up you see this button right here if you go ahead and press that button it's going to be able to open the rear glass so you can let in a little bit of air on a nice spring day like today in pennsylvania so that is pretty cool as well i love that the gx does that so not many luxury suvs let alone any suvs will allow you to do that so big fan and of course to the sides you do have led taillights for a little added illumination at night believe it or not there are still some manufacturers that do the halogens back there so always appreciate the leds but just below it all there is a single exhaust outlet with either a chrome or a dark chrome finish so that is pretty cool because so many manufacturers are tucking the exhaust away and i just love the exposed look like we have on the gx here so big fan but anyways i do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. Right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a little bit different than most other SUVs, I will say that. So there's a button on the key fob to unlock it, but there's kind of a hidden latch on the left side of the lift gate itself. Basically you just pull that towards you and it swings open to the right. And then of course you got the button on the rear glass as well to pop the rear glass, but it swings open to the right, you close it to the left. It's not like an open up a vertically kind of thing. So anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity 
behind the third row comes in 11.6 cubic feet behind the second row 46.7 cubic feet and with all rows folded 64.7 cubic feet so not the very most spacious suv but it's still a beast of an suv nonetheless but cargo lighting can be found back there there are actually grocery bag hooks there's chrome plated tie down anchors i liked that for the luxury trim level and up you will also get a cargo cover back there as well which is pretty cool and there is a spare tire that comes standard on the gx and as far as the tools to actually change the tire it's located on the back side of the lift gate actually so you simply just turn these two little doohickeys to the left it's going to open up and that's where all of your tools are to actually change the tire but anyways then make your way up to the third row legroom 29.3 inches not a whole lot whatsoever i'm not even going to try it because i'm too big but rear ventilation does come standard for the rear passengers there's some rear cup holders back there as well then making our way up to the second row legroom 34.1 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there captain's chairs are going to be optional the standard configuration is going to be bench seating that is what you guys are looking at and if you go with that bench seating there is rear center armrest with cup holders so i did like seeing that heated second row is going to come on the premium trim level and up we got those heated seat buttons if the rear passengers just look forward tri-zone climate control is actually going to come standard as well so driver passenger and the rear passengers can all set their own temperatures so that's super convenient as well the only thing i kind of miss seeing is i would have loved to have seen some rear window sunshades for those rear passengers but maybe i'm just being picky so let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats 10-way power adjustable front seats do come standard for all trim levels memory settings coming standard for all trim levels as well new luck seating is going to be the standard finish on the gx and then heated and ventilated front seats are going to come on the premium trim level and up overall as far as seat comfort goes lexus always does a good job with seat comfort i certainly didn't have any issues in my short little test drive now we'll say if there were f sport seats in the gx that would be wonderful because those are my favorite seats but anyways then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for all trim levels there is actually a leather wood combination on the luxury trim level it's going to be optional on the others we do have that it's kind of hard to tell because it's a black wood but black wood black leather but it's pretty cool i like the feel of it and then a heated steering wheel is going to come on the luxury trim level as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup and let me start by showing you guys the key you got your lexus logo on the one side then when you flip it over lock unlock and the button to pop the rear tailgate there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that black engine start button located kind of just by the driver's right knee and so once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is on your right and there is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display there are some steering wheel mounting controls found on the right side of the steering wheel giving you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's your outside temperature as well there's a digital speedometer if you wanted to choose to display that there's some steering angle information there's when you need your next oil change some safety features the list goes on so pretty much everything you could possibly want up on the digital portion of the gauges there but to then make our way to overall interior quality there's a power moonroof that's going to come standard on all trim levels overhead sunglass holder kind of with the school bus mirror as well so you could spy on your rear passengers always like that home lane control shot the three different garage doors found just below the rear view mirror there dual zone climate control is going to come standard but again tri-zone climate control is going to be available on the premium trim level and up there is illuminated door sills for the luxury and the black line trim levels ashwood trim for the black line trim level as well and so that ashwood trim is found on the doors by the way and just above the passenger side glove box and of course on the steering wheel but overall when it comes to interior quality there's actually a suede headliner i love that little detail you don't find that that often except on super high-end cars like porsche and alfa romeo things like that so i love the suede headliner here but perhaps my favorite part about the interior is the CD player. So yeah, it's not often that you actually see CD players in vehicles anymore, so I definitely liked that. That was pretty cool. Just in front of the shifter though, you got a little bit of storage. There's a 12 volt power outlet, couple USB charging ports, and an aux port as well. And within the center armrest, there is probably the most storage that I have ever seen in a vehicle. And you got a little tray up top for some coins and stuff as well, but that is a ton of storage within the center armrest. Not used to seeing that much, but 
Anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the tech here. There is a 10.3 inch color touchscreen display that does come standard. You got Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, of course, but a factory navigation system actually does come standard as well. A lot of times you won't get that standard. You could check out your driving statistics up there if you wanted to. You got your climate control information as well, along with your radio information. And so standard sound system actually for every single trim level is gonna be a nine speaker sound system, but did want to mention there is an optional 17 speaker Mark Levinson sound system that's going to be optional for all trim levels actually and that comes with 330 watts but 17 speakers that's a ton but we don't actually have that one today unfortunately so let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out our nine speaker sound system that we have with us here today. Okay dang I couldn't stop listening to that there is definitely a subwoofer, if not 10 of them in this car, but there's only nine speakers, but 10 subwoofers. Now, I'm just kidding, but still, ton of bass in this GX. That was ridiculous, especially for a nine speaker sound system. I'm not saying nine speakers is not a lot because it actually is. So a lot of SUVs will even give you six speakers. So a nine speaker is plenty fine. Mark Levinson is gonna crush it, don't get me wrong, but that was a really good sound system for nine speakers for the GX without a doubt. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the GX in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, but you also get that little panoramic view monitor to the right as well, giving you that bird's eye view, which is always, it's going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags do come standard, driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert, dynamic radar cruise control, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, and intuitive parking assist as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the GX, well above average reliability is the exact rating by Consumer Reports. It does not get any better than that, by the way. Probably the most reliable luxury SUV in existence. This thing is very off-road capable as well. We're not gonna do any off-road testing, of course, because this isn't my vehicle, but it is built for that, so you certainly shouldn't have any issues there. Standard safety is very good. Opening rear window, that is freaking awesome. I absolutely love that you never see that as far as room for improvement goes you got a little bit uh snug rear seats definitely not the most rear legroom in its class not the best fuel economy but that is to be expected with a giant v8 under the hood so you're not necessarily buying this suv for fuel economy after all and i think digital gauges will look pretty darn good in this thing as well so anyways let me know what you guys think of the gx 460 in the comments section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold